Something strange is happening beneath the American Midwest. Scientists monitoring a region thousands of miles from any plate boundary have picked up a series of subtle, quiet shifts. Small earthquakes, micro-fractures, ground motion that shouldn't exist, a fault zone that should be dead, is moving. And the real shock? Some geologists warn that an earthquake here could send shaking farther and affect more people than a major quake on the San Andreas itself. Why? Because this isn't California. This is the New Madrid Seismic Zone, one of the strangest, most misunderstood, and potentially dangerous geological systems on Earth. And today we're diving into the science behind this mysterious fault, and why a future quake here could be far more destructive than most Americans realize. Over the past decade, monitoring stations have detected something unexpected, a rise in microearthquakes. Slow, measurable ground deformation. Shifts along buried faults deep beneath thick layers of rock. Evidence of strain that isn't relaxing, but building. These changes aren't dramatic, they aren't headline grabbing, but they are consistent and they're happening in a place that, in theory, should not be seismically active at all. So what exactly is waking up beneath the Midwest? And why here? Unlike California, the New Madrid region is not located at the edge of a tectonic plate. There's no subduction, no transform boundary, no continental collision. This should be one of the safest, quietest geological regions in North America. But deep below the farmland, rivers, and small towns lies a scar left behind by one of Earth's greatest failed experiments, an ancient rift. Millions of years ago, the continent tried to tear itself apart right here, but the split never completed. The crust stretched, cracked, and thinned, then stalled. But that half rift never healed. It became a permanent weak spot in the North American plate, a place where stress accumulates silently for centuries before releasing without warning. This is why the New Madrid Fault exists. Not because the Earth is splitting today, but because it almost did long ago. Now comes the part that shocks most people. If a magnitude 7 earthquake strikes California, damage is severe, but mostly contained to a region nearby. In the Midwest, a quake of the same size could shake half the continent. Here's why. The central U.S. sits on old, cold, extremely rigid crust. Seismic waves travel through it like sound through steel. By contrast, the crust under California is warm and fractured. It absorbs energy quickly. This means shaking in the Midwest, travels farther, retains more strength, affects vastly larger areas, reaches major cities hundreds of miles away. A magnitude 7 here could be felt in Chicago, St. Louis, Memphis, Nashville, Little Rock, Indianapolis, even parts of the East Coast, and that's before considering the deep layers of thick, water-soaked sediments that amplify shaking dramatically. This is why scientists worry, not because New Madrid will produce a California-style quake, but because it will produce something unique and potentially broader in reach. A large quake here wouldn't only shake the ground, it would strike at the heart of America's infrastructure. The Mississippi River Corridor, a critical artery for shipping and energy, crosses directly through the danger zone. Bridges built for wind, not lateral motion, pipelines stretching across unstable sediments, aging brick buildings in major cities, millions of homes without earthquake-resistant design. And unlike California, where decades of awareness improved building codes, the Midwest is largely unprepared. If the New Madrid fault ruptures, the consequences would be felt across energy systems, transportation networks, agriculture, and supply chains. And the last time this fault moved, it didn't just cause damage, it changed the map. Between 1811 and 1812, the New Madrid fault unleashed a series of earthquakes so powerful that eyewitnesses struggled to describe them. The ground didn't just shake, it rolled. Waves moved across the landscape like ripples on a lake, toppling forests in seconds. The Mississippi River surged upward, then reversed direction as the riverbed twisted and collapsed. Swamps turned into lakes overnight. People were thrown from their beds hundreds of miles away. Church bells rang in cities as far as Boston, and the aftershocks lasted for months. It was one of the most extreme geological events in American history. And today, millions of people live directly above the same fault system. The early 1800s offered something modern America does not, a mostly empty frontier. Today, the situation is different. Now the region includes 
major population centers, interconnected power grids, water systems, internet backbones, chemical and industrial corridors, highway networks, the Mississippi shipping route. A repeat of the 1811 to 1812 quakes would disrupt commerce and infrastructure at a scale not seen in modern U.S. history. California is prepared for earthquakes. The Midwest is prepared for almost anything except earthquakes. That vulnerability is the real danger. Scientists disagree about the future of the new Madrid fault. Some argue that the ancient rift is slowly fading, its cycles growing weaker over time. Others point to new evidence that suggests the opposite. Microquakes remain constant. Faults show signs of locking and accumulating strain. GPS sensors detect millimeter scale ground shifts. River sediments show repeated major quakes over thousands of years. The truth appears to be somewhere in the middle. The fault is quiet, but not dead. And intraplate faults like this have a pattern. Long silence, sudden release, long silence again. What scientists do know is this. A lack of recent large earthquakes does not mean the risk is gone. It means strain is building quietly, out of sight, just as it did before 1811. So what does the future actually hold for the New Madrid seismic zone? To understand that, we need to zoom out far beyond human time scales and imagine how this hidden fault might behave over the next hundred years and the next thousand. For one, scientists know that the crust in this region is still adjusting to stresses that began millions of years ago. Even though the rift failed to break the continent apart, the leftover fractures continue to respond to the slow push of the North American plate. This means the system is not static, it's in motion, but at a pace almost impossible for humans to notice. Ground deformation studies show that different segments may lock and unlock at different times. One part may remain frozen for decades, while another slowly creeps forward, almost like an old hinge shifting under pressure. When these locked segments eventually give way, the energy stored over decades, or centuries, can release in a single violent event. Some models predict that the region may experience clusters of earthquakes rather than isolated ones. Quiet periods might last 200 to 300 years, followed by episodes of elevated seismicity. We happen to be living during one of those quiet periods, but quiet does not mean safe. It simply means the system is preparing in ways our instruments can barely detect. Other researchers estimate that groundwater levels, river loading, and even seasonal temperature shifts can subtly influence the stress on buried fault lines. Not enough to trigger the next big rupture, but enough to modulate how the crust stores energy. And as climate patterns shift and the Mississippi River undergoes long-term changes in flow and sediment buildup, the forces pressing down on the rift may evolve as well. Infrastructure will also shape future outcomes. The Midwest is rapidly urbanizing. New roads, new pipelines, new distribution hubs, new high-voltage corridors, all built on land that behaves very differently during shaking than the rocky coasts of California. Even modest tectonic activity in this region could have far-reaching effects simply because modern systems are more interconnected than ever before. In the end, the most likely future for the New Madrid Fault is not one massive continent rewriting event. It's a slow buildup of stress, followed by a release, one significant enough to shock a region unprepared for shaking. The New Madrid Fault isn't likely to split the continent apart. It won't sink states or create Hollywood-style scenes. But it represents something more unsettling, a powerful geological force in a place where few expect it. A fault that rewrote the landscape once, and could again. A reminder that Earth's greatest forces don't always sit on coastlines. Sometimes they sit quietly beneath our feet, waiting for the right moment. If you want more deep dive documentaries into Earth's hidden hazards, mysteries, and natural forces, make sure to like the video and subscribe, because the planet is always changing, and we're just getting started exploring the forces that shape it. What do you think is the biggest risk from a New Madrid earthquake? The shaking, the infrastructure, or the long-distance impact? I'm replying to the top comments.